Well, interesting games in the Champions League this morning. I'm sure a lot of you people already know what's happening. You've seen the highlights, you watch the games. 3-3 between Real Madrid and Manchester City in a cracking game. Fantastic goal. So that Foden Rockets. Guardiola's goal was great as well. The silver goal, maybe you say, caught the keeper off guard. But that uh, Valverde finish to make it 3-3 for Madrid. Ooh, absolute cracking shot. And of course, we had the 2-2 between Arsenal and Bayern Munich, which is going to be focusing this video on here. Because let, let's just go through this, right? So the game finishes 2-2 amid controversy in all aspects of the game. Uh, first of all, how Bayern got their um, their second goal with the penalty from Sane moving in. A lot of people have said there's not enough contact in that for that to be a penalty. Well, unfortunately, player gets contact, goes down in the box. It's down to the referee to make that decision, which we'll get to again with refereeing. Oh, excuse me. Yeah, decisions. And then also we've also got the... The Gabriel handball that was not picked up at all until after the game and also the almost obvious Saka Neuer incident at the end of the game there. But there was a lot of talk of, of Arsenal winning this game comfortably beforehand. I saw a lot of people saying, yeah, they, we're Arsenal at home, it's it's 2-0, it's 3-0. You know, a lot of people were just saying, just get the win. You're yeah, being a little bit more cautious about this match and rightfully so. I mean, even me, when I did my little... A draw video when that uh, happened a few weeks ago was it fifth january february now whatever the hell it was um i think it was february uh, even i said i think bind will go through purely on the fact that they are running off of ucl fumes because they've got nothing else to play for in germany out of the german cup they're no chance of winning the bundesliga i think a couple more uh, wins and you know buy leverkusen and take that out big ups to them so champions league is all they got left and Thomas Tuchel knows how to set up because he is a more of a cup manager. I think he got to, what, six finals with with Chelsea? Five finals or something like that? Obviously, two of those lost uh, against us, that being Liverpool on penalties, but still got into Champions League, Super Cup, you know, Club World Cup, and whatever the hell else it was. So decent in that aspect there. But for Arsenal, it was great not to get rinsed, but poor not to beat this washed quote-unquote Bayern Munich team who, again, are not the Bayern Munich of old. They're not the Bayern Munich that we played in the 17-18 season uh, when it comes to the Champions League. Obviously, a few more players back then. We had a different different squad, and it's definitely not the same Bayern Munich team that slapped up Arsenal last time they played 5-1, both home and away, with a 10-2 aggregate scoreline. So it's good in that aspect here. Munich, not so great in the Bundesliga, but very good in the UCL, as I have already stated. And Arsenal, best team in England, apparently, but not the uh, the best team in Europe, or not good enough that they can't beat a Bayern Munich team that's said to be quite poor. So, um, yeah. No away fans either. There was no away fans in this game. So I think there was like 250 Bayern Munich fans, like VIP tickets or something, give it to like family members of the... Uh, of the players or something like that. And that's pretty much all they had there. And when Bayern scored their goals, he had a few cheers. You could hear them. But apart from that, it was all Arsenal fans. And it was different. Even Thomas Tuchel picked them up, which um, we'll look at him in a second here. And this was Arsenal's for the taking, in my opinion. I actually did think Arsenal should have absolutely taken this game to them. And they dominated, as you can see here. You know, Bayern Munich had the more expected goals based on the chances created because they did fluff a few chances. But in terms of overall play, this was an Arsenal game. 13 shots, four on target, only two on target for Bayern Munich. Again, eight shots at goal, uh, two on target, so still only conceding a small amount of shots because their defense seems to be doing wonders, but then again, their defense kind of like cost them the first goal, if you will, with a um, bad back pass, people blaming Gabriel, some saying, um, I think it was Kivio that started, uh, was it Sinchenko that started, I don't even know who they were starting this game, so yeah, Kivio, who um, you know got hooked at half time and they brought on Zinchenko, I believe, and it's, um, yep, there is, and yeah, back pass and Leno, uh, not Leno, fuck, would I get Leno from bloody hell? Raya had to readjust, they concede their goal there, so maybe the defence was a little bit shaky in this instance. The occasion maybe getting to them, I'm not sure. But when all said and done, this was an Arsenal-dominant game, but don't be fooled, Bayern Munich also got a couple of chances themselves. Sane had like a one-on-one -on -one that he should have done better on in the first half. Obviously, they hit the post late in the second half, well before the, um, the penalty controversy. And... Um, 
you know, no away goals rule either. Um, usually two away from home is a strong way to, it's a strong uh, outcome that you take back to, to your home ground. So, you know, if Bayern Munich were to score one, Arsenal would then need to score two goals in order to make it through. It's no longer good to just finish the game tied and then go to extra time and subsequently penalties. Man City. 3-3 at Real Madrid away from home. They go to the Etihad now next week. So if they score one, Madrid need, uh, Madrid just need one. They just need to tie the game. Whereas beforehand, if Man City scored one to make it 4-3, um, Madrid would have to score two goals to be above on the goal difference rule. That used to give it a bit extra spice, but not anymore. That's gone and dusted. So the away leg now for Arsenal next week at the Allianz Arena. Good luck at a jam-packed Bayern Munich house over there is going to be absolutely mental with all the munich fans back in full force full voice and definitely going to be up for it so this is now the real test for arsenal going away to germany last time they were there they got slapped up 5-1 maybe they can do the opposites but as i said Bayern munich only have the champions league to play for so this is everything in their basket and Look, it's not going to be easy. I don't think I expect Bayern Munich to put up a bit of a fight in this game. But then again, if Arsenal are this big team, if they are the uh, contenders, not pretenders, then they're really going to have to go for it. So I still think Bayern Munich take this one out because they've got the UCL heritage. It is at their home ground. It's 2-2. Anything possible. Players, you know, after coming back from injury will probably get a bit more minutes into their legs. You never know. It could be a whole different outcome for them on the night. So we shall see what happens in this game. Real Madrid and City, well, everyone's tipping City to go through because the return leg is at the Etihad. But then again, if Madrid spring one on them, you never know what can happen. Last year, they got trounced 4-0 or was it 4-1 or something to that effect. I don't know. It was a big scoreline and that I want to repeat of that. So that'll be an interesting game too. Now, this incident here, the Gabriel madness moment of brain fart. Well, Raya plays the ball to Gabriel. Gabriel picks it up and repositions it in that corner of the of the goalkeeper's area and then continues to play. You can see when they play on, Kane turns around and the other player up front, was it Nabry maybe? I don't know who it was, don't really care. They turn to the referee and they put the arms up question like, bro, what the hell? You, you blew the whistle, apparently. They played at it and he's picked it up. That is, by definition, letter of the law, a penalty unless the keepers touched it twice if he's kicked it and then touched it again it's an indirect free kick if it's picked up in the penalty box by not by uh, the um the home team or the, the defending team's uh, player penalty that should have been a penalty keeper giving the ball to gabriel to position it to play first up that's a big question mark there after the referee was really called gabriel not paying attention picking it up raya should have given the ball to gabriel with his hands if anything or Gabriel should have taken it himself and repositioned it. Kicking the ball like that is is just stupid. Now, I remember there was a a goal that Liverpool scored. It was Count and Torres, and I forget who he was against. I think it was... Oh, I forget who he was. It was like in the 2010-2011 season or 11-12, start of 11... No, I think it was 10-11. It was 10-11. And there was a situation where the opposition team got a free kick uh, around about halfway between the pe the halfway line and the penalty box. And then instead of the opposition player, like, you know, handing the ball to the to his goalkeeper, he sort of like kicked it with like a back heel motion and the boys have played on and they've gone and, and scored a goal. And then the opposition teams think like, well, hang on a second, we wouldn't kick off. And then they went to the side, uh, to the, um, to the lino, looked at the lino, consulted with him. He said, yeah, he played at the ball and, you know, looked like it was a play at the ball for me. Yeah, play at the ball. Yep, yeah, cool. Bang, goal to Liverpool. So it has happened before. It reminds me of that. But the pass to Gabriel is what makes it so convincing that it was a recommencement of play. It wasn't like he just like sort of like casually laid it off to him. He actually gave him the ball to play on. Gabriel picked it up. So I don't know if there was a mix of communication or whatever that, that had happened there. Now, it has to be said that Thomas Tuchel uh, was not happy about this, and this is what he had to say. So we stepped up after being 1-0 down. This was a very good reaction, and in general, a very good team effort. We had the chance to score the third goal and hit the post with Kingsley Coman, and 
I think uh, the referee did not have uh, the courage today to, to give a deserved penalty in a, in, a, in a bit of a crazy and awkward situation. But he admitted on the pitch that he saw the situation and that a quarterfinal is not enough for him to, to give a hand penalty on, on for a kid's mistake. So he admitted that he knows about the mistake the player made. That is, uh, that's a bit frustrating. It's a kid's mistake, yeah? So apparently... What Thomas Tuchel says, referee on the pitch said, oh yeah, sorry, fuck that one up, mate, my bad. Yeah, it's a bit late for my bads on that front there. So not only did we have that from Thomas Tuchel, claiming that the referee knew he messed up and look, you know, I, I didn't give the call because of a kid's error, but it's the same notion again of, you know, kicking an opposition player in the chest, a high foot, don't have your high foot because that's going to cause the referee to call a foul against you for dangerous play or high foot or whatever it is. Yeah, it's the first rule. Yeah, don't go in with studs. Don't go with a high foot at chest height or shoulder height. Simple stuff, yeah? Well, the uh, the the absolute uh, madman, Danny Murphy, had an even wilder take. He absolute fuck, this one's special. I mean, even my comment here, yeah, like, not that say, like, oh, look at me, I'm getting whatever. I'm like... I said, wait, so the referee didn't give the correct call by the letter of the law and it's refreshing. Let me uh, tell you what I mean. Of judgment, but the evidence is in front of his eyes. If indeed the situation manifests itself as we all saw, then it's a challenged decision. It's a poor decision. It is Whether a poor decision, but I, I've got to say, what, what a great world it would be if refs were allowed to be... I know they're not, so I'm not hypothesising, but, you know, to ref with common sense. Because, obviously... The ball gets past him, he puts his hand on it to take a goal kick in effect. It's a pen by the letter of law. It's a pen, no doubt. Yeah. So he admits it's a pen by the letter of the law. Okay, I'm with you so far. But actually, it's quite refreshing. Do you want to win a game like that? We didn't, you know what I mean? It's like... So you kind of back with the referee did? Well, I can't because it's not the law, so it's nonsense. But it is a pen. Everyone knows it's a pen. But I kind of get the logic around football. That's the way... You don't want to win games like that, do you? Fuck right off, Danny Murphy, you fucking knob. No, that's it does not matter how. If it's in the first minute or the 90th minute, a goal kick is taken. The goalkeeper passes it to his defender. His defender picks up the ball in the penalty box, repositioning it. It's a fucking handball, man. It doesn't matter if it's 10-0, if it's 0-0, if it's 5-0, if it's the last kick of the game to win the game 1-0. It does not matter. It, it doesn't matter if you're winning 5-0 and you give one away to the opposition, it's still a penalty. It does not matter how you win the fucking game. The aim of the game is just to fucking win. What is this? It's refreshing to see the referee not give an actual factually right decision. What fucking take is that? And and also, you don't, because of a ridiculous decision like that, he gets no credit then for the way they both refs in both games last night trying to keep the game going yeah. and flowing and getting, telling people to get up. And even the Saka one, Ali, Ali McCoy's called it so quickly. Brilliant, by the way. Yeah. You know, It's not about our oh, referee letting the game play on and do this and do that. It's still the incorrect call. He should have given the penalty because that was a penalty, yeah? That's a fucking penalty. That's how it works. I, I, I don't know what the fuck Danny Murphy is on right now. Like that, that is some fucking ridiculous take there. It's a penalty. It doesn't matter what the referee did. It's refreshing. It's this. It, no. It's the wrong call by the letter of the law. He said it himself. Yes, it, it should be a penalty, but it's refreshing to see the referee not give it because do you really want to win a game like that? Mark well, couldn't give two fucks if the ball went off the fucking defender's tip of his cock and fucking went into the goal. I don't care. Goals. Penalties can lead to goals. You, you do the wrong thing in the penalty box, it leads to a goal. It's as simple as... Now, speaking of... That was just fucking absolutely dumb. Like, that was just stupid from him. That should have been... For me, that's a penalty, yeah? And, and let me just say this as well. I might clip this out as a separate bit here as well. When people talk about decisions that have happened in games, yeah? So, let's say Arsenal, Bayern Munich finishes 2-2, yeah? Bayern Munich had this Gabriel incident that was not given in their favor, right? Cool, fair enough. Then they also had the Saka incident with Neuer at the end of the game. Fair enough. If Bayern get that penalty, that would have made it 3-1 if they scored their goal at that time of the game. Because Trossard didn't score until the 67th, uh, 76th minute, sorry. That would have been 3-1. Do Arsenal score a goal to make it 3-2? Do Arsenal capitulate and give another penalty away or concede another goal to Bayern Munich and make it 4-1? Do Bayern Munich do a madness and Arsenal score 
two, three goals and come back to, you know, three, three or four, three, but you don't know. And I hate when people do this. A lot of people do this because the game finished two, two, and you look back at the decisions that weren't given. So then you give them the decisions that should have been given. You count them as goals and you say, oh, well, they would have won three, two. It doesn't work like that because everything that happens after that incident is different. It's after the fact. It does not matter. Arsenal get that penalty. Uh, sorry, Bayern Munich get that penalty in the 67th minute. They score at 3-1. Everything that we know that happened after that 67th minute does not happen. That That's all changed. It's a whole different timeline. It's it's the back to the future thing. Yeah, Once something happens in the bank, skews and it ventures off into another, another outcome. I hate when people do that. That's not how the fucking football works. Just because a decision goes... Uh, against you and you go back in hindsight and you add that to what's already happened it doesn't work like that i hate when people do that i wish they would stop doing that it's frustrating as hell right now we did see the incident we're going to look at it again here so i maintain that there should be uh, a referee's decision if an opposition player gets contact in the box and it goes down if there's contact in the box by an opposition player referee has to make a decision i've said it consistently i will stand by that now when it comes to the penalty call well we'll look at it in a second in this video here but when it comes to the penalty call which we'll just have a squeeze through here leave it as a still there that incident there my opinion it's not an obvious penalty but that's not to say that there's no contact. He's, he didn't dive. It's not a dive. It's not like he went over without any contact. There was contact there, but not the contact that a lot of people want to say there was. Now, Saka's leg is left out on the right side. Dang, so his body shifting to the left and his leg still out on the right. Is that a, because his body shifted so quickly that his leg couldn't readjust? Maybe. But Noya does also have a bit of a swing out as well. But his leg is on the ground planted. So he's got like a stand. He's like, like a... Uh, planted foot like a standing foot. Now, as the foot gets planted, that's where the contact gets made, right? Saka's leg is left out. It catches Noya or Noya catches Saka, whichever way you want to go about it. If Noya catches Saka, then you say, well, that's a penalty. I say that because a lot of people have said that, well, his leg is in motion, therefore he catches him. But my whole thing is, again, Noya's foot gets planted. Now, I've heard many say Noya's, uh, Noya's leg is in motion, which is true, but Saka's foot is high, being you know below the knee area, above the shin type of type of area. So that might have saved Neuer if the leg, were, if Saka's leg was a bit down, a bit further down, and he actually swipes or leans into him, or if he's the one who had the motion moving forward and sweeping him, I would say that would be a penalty. That's the only thing that that saves it for me. If Saka's foot was closer to the ground, it might have been given. It might have been given. And by the by, now that since I've got this still image on there. Can we stop using still images to give points for, uh, you know, our explanation and shit like that? Like we, we, we say stop looking at the still impact moment on a red card and yet we see this for the pe penalty calls. Let's not do that. Let's look at it in the full motion. And I know Dio has been doing the rounds on, on other panel streams showing all these things. I'm just like, I, I get it. There is contact there. I just don't think that it's Neuer who is the one at fault. I think Saka leaves a, a leg out, and I think that's probably why he gets uh, called back on it. So, and look, actually, no, I'll refrain to say the last thing. Let's have a look at this um, this video here. So let's have a listen to uh, what's being said here by uh, Christine, who's a CSB uh, referee analyst or something to that effect. Anyway, she'll give us an explanation according to her. Yes, it wasn't a penalty. Uh, how difficult is it for referees in those incidences where, where players are manipulating essentially to try and win the penalty? Uh, very difficult, but what really helps a referee be able to get this correct decision on the field is all about angles. So the Swedish referee here, having that position and being able to see exactly where the keeper is planted, that he didn't extend himself, and being able to initiate and see Saka's top of the right boot going closer to you know the bottom of his knee and initiating that contact and pulling it. You can only get that view if you're in the position and the referee is actually looking at it from this angle itself. If the referee had been two steps, even three steps to the left, could easily be basically understanding and seeing and thinking that the keeper had extended his right leg into the path of Saka, who was running on. And instead, this actually is a very good no decision. The referee's body language is very confident that he had nothing on it. And when you replay it, both in slow motion as well as at 50% and 100%, it confirms that on decision was correct. But it is a difficult decision, especially with only seconds left in injury time. There you go. 
Verdict being that Saka left his leg out and initiated the contact with Neuer. It wasn't Neuer sweeping out his leg, hitting into Saka. It was Saka hitting into Neuer, which is why I said if Neuer was the one sweeping into him, then I would say there's probably a case to be to be said here, but there wasn't. So that's on that section there. You can make up your own minds. And look, by the by, look, if this was Liverpool as well, if this was Liverpool, I'd be looking at this in the same way. I'd be looking at it if it was given, saying we were gifted a penalty. Arsenal fans and football fans alike have disagreed, claiming the referee didn't give it because big game call, last seconds of the game, no one wants to do that. And some can argue the same thing was said regarding Doku on McAllister when we played City at home a few weeks ago, yeah? Studs to the chest, referee called no foul because whatever reason, right? Not enough, apparently. Or he played at the ball when I believe clearly he did not, right? And it's it's not because of corruption. It's not because others are blaming uh, you know the referees and shit like that. It's your team had chances to take uh, to score goals and they didn't. Ergo, that is what happens now. That is just the shit reality of the situation. At best, both incidents should have potentially been looked at by the uh, referee on the VAR monitor. But VAR checks were done in the background, especially for that Saka penalty claim. Nothing, as far as I know, for the Gabriel call, and we only knew about this after the game once social media made it um, known. And I think Thomas Tuchel, I think, also would have um, probably mentioned something to the referee on the pitch as he claims that the referee actually said, yeah, we screwed that one up. My bad. Now, a couple of reactions. I want to look at Terry's reaction here. He was quite adamant that this was a penalty. He was not happy. Of course, he's on loan to Arsenal right now. He's a, he's a flip-flop fan. He flip-flops between Man United when they do well, like when they draw against Liverpool because we're wasteful. 87 shots over three goals, uh, over three games and no Ws. And he's on Arsenal's case when Arsenal are doing well or maybe he feels aggrieved. So this is the, uh, the take from Terry on the penalty call. There was huge controversy, and that is where we have to start. It's the biggest talking point of the night. And how? I am flabbergasted. I am shocked. I cannot believe a penalty was not given. Saka springs onto a... I'm not even sure. I haven't watched that part of the replay. I've been focusing on the foul. A ball that's going through. He rounds Manuel Neuer. Manuel Neuer can... The perfect screenshot. Now, Neuer's leg does look like it's out a bit, but he hasn't swept at Saka's leg. Saka's leg has gone into Neuer. That's the key difference for me. If Neuer sweeps, I have no doubts and say, bruv, that is a penalty. But because Saka goes into Neuer and not Neuer into Saka, that's why I believe it wasn't given. Continues to move forward. There is beyond clear contact. Saka is... He's pushed off his left foot. He is trying to avoid the goalkeepers to get onto the ball for a tap-in. There's rumours going around that Manuel Neuer stopped. He doesn't. Even in super slow-mo, you still him, see him motoring forward. It is a cast-iron, cast-iron penalty to a point where rivals are going to say Saka kicked him. I don't think he did. Saka's running yeah. at full, full speed. The goalkeeper comes out and... Actually, let me clarify. I don't think he kicked him on purpose. It, it is a coming together. How many times have we said... I've heard, I'm pretty sure I've heard Terry say it as well. I've heard many people say this online. Contact in the penalty box does not always equal a penalty, okay? They might look at this instant, instance and say, well, you know what? This is quite clear cut. That is nowhere near the ball. But then you look at Saka, where the ball is, as opposed to where his foot is, his right foot especially, and where Neuer's foot is being planted. And you can say, well, Neuer's nowhere near the ball and he's cleaned him out. But again, it's like Neuer's like, you know, gone to put his leg down to sort of like stop. And Saka's had his leg continue on, dragged, left dangling behind to get the contact, like we heard Christine say on the, the CBS thing there. Players like to leave a foot in so they can get contact. They're the ones who initiate the contact. They go down. But because the opposition players put a leg in a position that normally looks like they've swung at them or is the reason why they've gone down, they would get the penalty more often than not. And by the by, VAR. A lot of people are saying, where was VAR in all this? VAR was used in the background, I believe, in the Champions League. It's not like it is in the Premier League where they're going to stop and pause and look all at the replays. VAR does this shit in the background. Many people have said, why is VAR taking two, three minutes to get right? Let them do their thing. They check it out. Oh, yeah, it's not really clear and obvious. It could go either which way. So referee said no pen. Okay, cool. We're happy. No pen. If referee gave that a penalty, I think everyone else says, okay, fair enough. It's a penalty. I don't think many people would complain. That's where VAR is at with this. Anyway, so I'm, I'm talking too much. Back to Tessa. 
spreads himself big, as you can see, and makes contact with the player. And Arsenal fans, Arsenal fans everywhere should feel hard done by, in my opinion, by that decision. Nah, I disagree. How it was not given is absolutely beyond me. When you consider the amount of contact of Saliba on Sane earlier on in the game, also a stonewall penalty. Yeah, but there was actual movements uh, going forward, like actually stuck a leg out sort of a thing, like, you know, in the same flow. Like, Neuer sort of like stood still. He didn't go through. He didn't clean him. He didn't go through him. He sort of like came to a stop. And that's when they collided. Well, say they collided. They, you know, legs touched, shall we? Legs touched, shall we say. The other one with Sane, he was going through and there was a leg, there was a foot that was put out to try and get the ball, completely put him off in full flight side to side. That one's a little bit different. You can't say that's exactly in the same way. Again, that one is questionable. I don't know. I looked at that. I'm like, it's a bit of a fucking soft penalty to give, but I can see why it was given as well. Referee gave it on the field. It was probably you know, confirmed by VAR. We saw penalties. Think of the contact between Man United and Chelsea, The pen for those penalties. And that one there, it was not even looked at. It was not even checked by VAR. Let that sink in for a moment. And I understand completely that rivals of Arsenal will be buzzing about this. Bayern Munich fans will say, absolutely not. I understand. I mean, some people are saying, and it is quite funny, Saka kicked him. Fair enough. That's what everyone can. Just like Gabriel headbutted Harry Kane's elbow. You know, it's a same difference for me. I am shocked. The referee, what? his first ever uh, game of this magnitude. I th ah, yeah, yeah, Ref yeah. Terry's shocked because, of course, he has to. He's got to glaze Arsenal because that's what he's all about here. He doesn't want Liverpool to win anything. He doesn't want City to win anything. United can't win anything bar possibly the FA Cup. So he's banking everything on Arsenal this season. Self-admittedly, he's an Arsenal fan on loan, at least for the remainder of the next couple of months. So that's what Terry said there. And just by the by as well, I'm, I'm a rival fan. I'm not buzzing. I would like to see Arsenal go through. I don't want to see Bayern Munich go for another Champions League final. I don't want to see them make it through. They'll probably get annihilated by City or Madrid, fair, give or take. But still, I don't want to see them go through. But then again, it just it is what it is. Again, if this was Liverpool that this happened to, if this was Salah or Nunez or fucking Jota or Diaz or any of our forwards going through and that happens to them, I'm looking at them saying like, bruv, why is your leg stuck out there? Why did you not move your leg towards you? And it, it landed on one foot and then he dropped to the ground as well. Um, you know, it's almost like in a standing still motion as well. It's not like he tumbled forward at full speed. So I don't know, you can make up your own minds there. That was what Terry, Terry thought at least. Um, yeah, Bayern disallowed a penalty as well. Arsenal Terrace back in full effect. Bayern got robbed. Are you going to see a video about that? Terry gives Arsenal an hour of excuses and addresses the Bayern Munich incident for two minutes. Yeah, that was fucking bullshit. I think I spent more time on that. So that was out there. One more reaction to look at. I know a lot of Arsenal fans out there. Um, big ups to the Arsenal fans, by the way. No hard feelings, no disrespect. Just talking about things here, my opinion. And good old DT. DT is back. Look at that like to dislike ratio. 951 likes to 669 dislikes. This man is really um still not liked. I don't know if it's for his attitude, his personality, or his actual footballing takes, but let's see what he had to say about the referee because he claims the referee is a cheat. Strong language warning, mind you. And it's finished, Arsenal 2, Bayern Munich 2. And I think the only thing we can really talk about is the absolute blatant fucking penalty right at the end that was not given because once again, we've got to deal with UEFA, corrupt referees and inadequate, incompetent wankers. Corrupt referees, seriously, what possible corruption could there be where Arsenal are involved? What, did someone pay, you know, did Bayern Munich pay the, the referees at UEFA to stop you getting a penalty in the 90, 95th minute when they were also dicked a penalty as well? Seriously. You go and give a penalty to fucking Harry Kane in the first half, didn't you? Let him have his customary one at the Emirates as per usual. And then the most blatant fucking foul you've seen and you wave him play on. 
And then your ass falls out and you're like, oh, I'm going to blow my full time whistle. There's no consultation with VAR or anything. You wanker. You can see that this was his first ever Champions League knockout match. And I'll tell mm. you something. I think it'll be his last. What a wanker. You <laughs> well, last game, he reckons. Last game. Actually, speaking of that, I've got to get back to this video here. I've got a note here. 113, one hour and 13. What does he say? Um, I want to go back to the Arsenal game for a minute because I've, I've been, I got sent something maybe about 10 minutes ago, 15 minutes ago that Thomas Tuchel has said. I didn't see this during the game and it also oh, needs to be discussed. Uh, yeah. That's, um, pen. There was a goal kick to yeah, we saw this. Gabriel and the game carried on and the referee has gone into the dressing room of um, of Thomas Tuchel and uh, apologised and admitted they should have been given an, a penalty at that point because uh, the goal to kick it on the pitch. But, <laughs> ironically, Gabriel's had a bozo moment here. Mm. Didn't realise the game had kicked off and picked the ball up with his hand. So he's done it like an honest mistake. He hasn't tried to cheat out game. Has essentially not given two, in my, in my opinion, two stonewall penalties in this game. And it's an absolutely horrific night for referees. Horrific night for VAR. And like I said earlier, I wasn't defending or, or, or asking for the penalty for Arsenal out of any type of defence for them. It's about doing what I believe to be right. And this is an absolute... I mean, I, I said earlier on he should be dem demoted. I think this referee should be fired from European well, football. You can't well. not give to... How important these goals could be to buy... Him the first one should be more than enough. Again, I go back to what I said. That first goal, the, the, the penalty for Bayern Munich, if that's given, nothing else happens thereafter. There's no... There's, well, we don't know what happens, but one thing's for sure. There's no Trossard, a Trossard goal in the 76th minute. There's no penalty call on Saka in the 95th minute. And probably Bayern Munich don't go on to hit the post through Coleman in the 86th, 88th minute. So everything changes thereafter. It's just mad how you know, football uh, fans like to do this thing where they look at the facts, what's happened, the fact thereafter, game finishes 2-2, two, two, and then go back and add things along the way that ha that should have happened. And, add, you know, you don't add everything from that point gets wiped away and then you start afresh. I fuck, it just pisses me off when they do that. Anyways, this has been a bit of a long video. Didn't mean to ramble on for too long, but I hope you found this somewhat entertaining. And look, Arsenal fans, if you made it through this, I'm not here to shit on you or anything. I would like for you to go through, beat Bayern Munich, and then take on either City or Madrid, whoever it may be, and then I hope for the best, yeah? But you're playing away at the Allianz next, at a full house in Germany. Not going to be easy. It's 2-2, everything to play for. And look, you still got the Premier League to, to look out for as well. So there's some things to think about. And what do you want more, Premier League or Champions League? Or are you going to try to juggle for both? Well, Footy Judge Mo would like to have a word with you if that is the case, because he thinks that would be more impressive than City winning a treble. With that being said, I'm out of here. Peace out. Aussies next time.